Hello students, I am preparing a video for uh, 10th standard uh, students who are appearing for the examination in June 2021. I am today doing a video on trigonometry. Trigonometry. Today I will be in this video I will be doing the fundamentals. Now you people are afraid of this chapter because this is the first time you have been doing uh, algebra, geometry, arithmetic, all that you have been doing in previous classes. But this is the first time that you are hearing this word trigonometry. So naturally you are scared. What is this? Now there is nothing to be scared. Uh, al <laughs> already you have studied about triangles. This deals with right angle triangle, right angle triangle and this is some a, a branch of mathematics which is very useful in engineering solving engineering problems so this is that's why we have this subject being introduced to you from 10th standard this year now we will be taking the fundamentals of this subject now you know uh, if i draw two axes here this axis the vertical axis is called the y axis this is called the y axis and this is called the x axis this point where these two axes intersect is called as o the origin now let us say i have a vector here a vector which is capable of moving like this either way this way or that way that is if it is moving this way we say it is moving in anti-clockwise direction. It is against the clock, the direction in which the hands of the clock move. So that is called as the anti-clockwise direction. And if it moves this way, we call it as clockwise direction. Now, if it moves this way, the vector moves this way, it traces a angle. It makes an angle with the x-axis which is taken as the reference line that is 0. This is taken as 0. It makes an angle here. This angle is taken to be positive. If we move in the anti-clockwise direction, then it is considered to be negative. The angle is considered to be negative if it is uh, in the clockwise direction. Now, here I have, this is, let us say, OP is a uh, vector, a moving vector, OP is a vector, a line which can move like this and complete one circle. I am moving from here, this point, and now it has traced some angle here. That angle, let us call that angle as theta. Theta is nothing but an alphabet, you know, A, B, C, D, like that. In some other language, alpha, beta, gamma, etc., will come. So, one of the alphabet is theta. So it is taken here generally in trigonometry, we take that as theta, right? There is nothing to be worried about it. Now, from this point P, if I drop a perpendicular onto X axis, then here I have got a, I have got a right angle triangle. This OPM is a right angle triangle. This is, this is 90 degree angle or right angle. O PM is per perpendicular to OM, right? So that is a right angle triangle. Now this triangle has three sides. The sides are OP, PM and OM or MO. You can call it MO or OM, PM or MP, or OP or PO, anything you can call. Now these are three straight lines by which that triangle is bound. Now of the three, this is the longest side there because this is the biggest angle that will be naturally the longest side and that is called as you know hypotenuse. You have done it in geometry, right? That is called as the hypotenuse. Now this side PM is called the opposite side. It is called the opposite side because it lies opposite to this angle I have taken here theta. 
Now this is called the adjacent side. The side, the side next to the angle that is why it is called as the adjacent side. Now these are the three sides. With these three sides, how many ratios can be made? That is the length. With the length of these three sides, how many ratios can I make? I can make a maximum of six ratios, not more than that. I cannot make more than six ratios. The first one is PM by OP. PM by OP, that is hypotenuse, I mean sorry, opposite by hypotenuse, opposite side by hypotenuse, PM is opposite side, OP is the hypotenuse, so this ratio, one ratio. The second ratio that I can make is OM by OP, that is adjacent side by hypotenuse, this is the next side, next ratio, second ratio. The third ratio I can make is uh, o, PM by OM, PM by OM, that is opposite by adjacent, opposite by adjacent, this is the third one. Then fourth, I can make OP by PM, OP by PM, that is hypotenuse by opposite, hypotenuse by opposite, fifth one, will be OP by OM, OP by OM, that is hypotenuse by adjacent, then I can make OM by PM, OM by PM, that is adjacent by opposite. These are the six ratios and only six ratios that can be done with these three sides taking two to each. Right. You cannot make seventh ratio. No seventh ratio can be made with those three sides. Now these six ratios are called the trigonometric ratios of this angle. They are called the trigonometric ratios of that angle and their value will be constant as long as this, this angle is constant whatever may be the length of the sides. See here, what happens is if I increase the length of one side, now the other two sides also will increase proportionately such that the ratio, the value of the ratio will remain constant. It doesn't change as long as this angle doesn't change. Now they are called the six. In trigonometry there are only six ratios but they are interrelated. They are interrelated. We will find out that. Here this ratio, <coughs> this ratio is called the sine of the angle theta. This is called sine, S-I-N-E, sine of angle theta, sine of angle theta. This is called sine, S-I-N-E, sine of angle theta. This is called cosine, cosine of angle theta. This is called tangent of angle theta, tangent of theta. This is called cosecant of theta, cosecant of theta. And this is called secant of theta and this is called cotangent of theta, cotangent of theta. These are the six trigonometric ratios. There are only six trigonometric ratios in six ratios in trigonometry. They are shortly called sin theta, S-I-N. Instead of S-I-N-E, they will write only as S-I-N. This, instead of cosine, they will write it as cos theta. Instead of tangent, we can write it as tan theta. Instead of cosecant, we can write it as cosec theta. Instead of secant, we can write it as sec theta. 
and here instead of cotangent theta we write cot theta so these are the six trigonometric ratios of angle theta and they are by definition sin is opposite by hypotenuse cos is adjacent by hypotenuse tan is opposite by adjacent cosec is hypotenuse by opposite secant is hypotenuse by adjacent and cot is adjacent by opposite now as you go on using these ratios they will become you will get it by heart it becomes as easy as the formula the expansion of a plus b the whole square you know once you used, we used to struggle with that formula but now it looks very simple because we have been using it over and over again so similarly these also will get used to you will get used to it now these are interrelated what are the interrelationships let us see the interrelationships are this now you know this and this are related this seventh one seventh one if i take cosec is always the reciprocal you know if you have got two ratios one is a by b and the other is b by a they are called the reciprocal of each other this is the reciprocal of this and this is the reciprocal of this because they have got inverted the numerator here becomes denominator and denominator becomes numerator then we say that it is reciprocal so cosecant and sine are related cosecant is always 1 by sine or sine is sine also can be written as 1 by cosec or sin theta multiplied by cosec theta it will be equal to 1 if the angle is same sin theta into cosecant of same angle the value will be equal to the product will be equal to 1 you can write like that similarly these two are related now that is eighth one eighth one secant theta sec theta is the reciprocal of cos or cos is the reciprocal of sec sec theta is 1 by cos theta or cos theta is 1 by sec theta or sec theta into cos theta is 1 similarly these two are related that is cot theta is cot is 1 by tan theta or tan is 1 by cot theta right or tan theta into cot theta if the angle is same the product of tan and cot will be equal to 1 if the angle is same so these are three relationships next next if we divide sin theta by cos theta sin theta divided by cos theta what do we get see here sin theta is pm by op pm by op divided by this is om by op that is adjacent by hypotenuse this is opposite by hypotenuse by definition now if you divide what happens pm by op into when you are dividing two ratios what will what will happen this divided by will be converted into into and this will be reversed it will be op by om now this op and this op get cancelled so this will be equal to pm by om that is opposite by adjacent which is nothing but tan theta so there is a relationship between sin theta cos theta and tan theta i can write tan theta is equal to it is the ratio of sin theta by cos theta sin theta by cos theta is tan theta i can write like this this is a relationship which connects sin cos and tan now similarly similarly what happens is if i divide cos theta by 11th one if i divide cos theta by sin theta cos theta divided by sin theta sin theta if you do you will get it as cot theta Same same way, if you do, you will get it as cot theta because 
here what will happen is it will be OM by OP this will come this side and that will go that side so it will be OM by OP OM will come here PM will come there so it will be cot theta so this is so cot theta can be written as cot theta can be written as cos by sin cos theta by sin theta so this relationship connects sin cos and cot theta right next after this what we do now 12th one now i started with a right angle triangle opm i started with a triangle opm you know that in a right angle triangle in triangle opm opm or you can call abc pqr anything no problem uh, by pythagoras theorem by pythagoras theorem this is already known to you theorem we know that we know that op square that is the hypotenuse square square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides that is om square plus pm square these are the other two sides op square is the hypotenuse square, this pythagoras theorem states that in any right angle triangle the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides right so using that we get this i will call this equation as one equation one now what i do is dividing equation one dividing equation one throughout throughout by op square once i will divide it by op square throughout next i will divide it by om square throughout then next i will divide it by pm square throughout and i get three relationships let us see what i get now now op square divided by op square so this is divided similarly this also must be divided om square by op square plus pm square by op square i have divided each one of them by op square so that the equation value of the equation doesn't change they remain the same now op square by op square is 1 when numerator and denominator of a ratio are equal the value is 1 is equal to om by op om is adjacent side op is hypotenuse the ratio of om by om to op is called cos theta now it is square here so it will be cos square theta cos square theta means cos theta into cos theta you know a square is a into a so same way cos square theta means cos theta in, into cos theta now pm by op that is opposite by hypotenuse this will be sin square theta so i get a relationship here between sin square theta cos square theta i will get a relationship this relationship can be written in three ways one is sin square theta plus cos square theta provided the same angle these two are this is both are same angles then it is the sum of these two will be equal to 1 or sin square theta sin square theta is 1 minus cos square theta whenever i want i will change it like that the or cos square theta is equal to 1 minus sin square theta i can write like this i can use these relationships in a problem for solving the problems so this is one relationship sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 it can be altered like this we can change it like this like this whenever we want we can change it while doing the problems next 
Next, <coughs> what I do is here B, 12B, 12B. Now I will divide, dividing, dividing equation 1 throughout. First I divided by OP square. Now I will divide it by OM square. By OM square we get what do we get? OP square OP square by OM square. I am dividing now all the terms here. All the terms in this equation by OM square. OP square by OM square is equal to OM square by OM square plus PM square by OM square, uh, OM square PM square by OM square if I divide what do I get OP OP is hypotenuse OP is the hypotenuse OM is the adjacent side hypotenuse by adjacent is secant theta so it will be 6 square theta is equal to this will be 1 om square by om square will be 1 plus pm pm is opposite side om is adjacent side right we have we had this triangle opm this was the triangle pm is the opposite side to this angle theta om is the adjacent side so adjust opposite by adjacent it is tan so it will be tan square theta now this is another relationship which connects secant square theta and tan square theta again this can be uh, manipulated like this secant square theta minus 1 is equal to tan square theta whenever we want we can do it or secant square theta minus tan square theta is equal to 1 if I send tan square theta this side I can get three relationships like that next third one what I do this is second one right third one what I do now the same equation one I will now divide it throughout 12c 12c a b I have done c dividing equation one equation 1 throughout by now what is left pm square is left pm square what do we get we get op square this will not move it will be there only op square by pm square is equal to this will not move om square by pm square plus pm square by pm square pm square now op by pm that is hypotenuse by opposite op is the hypotenuse again if I draw a triangle this was my triangle opm op is hypotenuse hypotenuse by opposite is cosec cosec square theta is equal to om by op adjacent by opposite that is cot cot square theta plus pm square by pm square means it is 1 again you can convert it into 3 you can get 3 relationships cosecant square theta minus cot square theta is equal to 1 or cosecant square theta minus 1 is equal to cot square theta you can do like this also whenever we get a problem we can do it now these are the interrelationships what I have done now are the interrelationships between the 6 trigonometric ratios there are only 6 trigonometric ratios and they can be they are interconnected like by these uh, relationships now
Now there is, let us say, let us take some problem here. Exercise 11.1 .1. In triangle ABC In triangle ABC In triangle ABC Right angled Right angled at B At B AB is equal to 24 centimeter. AB is equal to 24 centimeter. BC is equal to BC is equal to 7 centimeter. Find number 1. Find sin A cos A. Sin A comma cos A, that is the value of sin A and cos A, he wants us to find. Second problem, same thing, same problem, second sub question, sin C and cos C, find sin C and cos C, right. <clears throat> like that, yes. Now, here, ABC is a right angle triangle. ABC is a right angle triangle. We need not measure it. Just draw a rough figure. We will draw a rough figure. So this is angle A. This is angle B. And let us say this is angle C. Right. He has given two sides here. What are the two sides he has given? AB is 24 centimeter. AB is 24 centimeters and BC is 7 centimeter. 7 centimeters. He says find sin A. Sin A means this angle. A means this angle. Sin of A he wants. Sin of A is opposite by hypotenuse. Opposite by hypotenuse. Now, hypotenuse is not given, so I cannot find this sin A immediately. Similarly, cos A, cos A is adjacent, that is AB by our hypotenuse, that is AC. I know the length of AB, but I don't know the length of AC. Now, only if I know the length of AC, I can write the value of sin A and cos A. Otherwise, I cannot do it. So to write them, I have to know this. Now you know, in a right angle triangle, if we know two sides, any two sides, the third side can be found out. Now in this triangle, AC is the hypotenuse. So AC square, we know, is equal to AB square plus BC square. So in a right angle triangle, if they have given any two sides, the third side can be found out. So here, what we don't know is AC, which is the hypotenuse. So AC square is equal to uh, AB square. AB is 24. So 24 square plus BC square, that is 7 square. Now 24 square is 576. 7 square is 49. The total comes to 625. AC square is 625. So AC will be square root of 625. That is, you know, 25 centimeters. 25 centimeters. Now, I know all the three sides. All the three sides. So this is 25 centimeters. Now I know all the three sides. So I can write the value of sin A, cos A, sin C, cos C, anything I can... Any ratio, any trigonometric ratio I can write. Here you see, first problem, first sub question, sin A. Sin A is, sin is always opposite by hypotenuse. So opposite here is BC and hypotenuse is AC. 
so BC by AC so BC is 7 divided by AC is 25 so this is the answer sin A is 7 by 25 now cos A cos of A that is cos of this angle that will be adjacent by hypotenuse that is AB by AC AB is the adjacent side AC is the hypotenuse so that will be 24 by 25 this is the these are the answers next second part second sub question you have to write the value of sin C and cos C okay sin C and cos C now C means this angle now when you take this angle this becomes the opposite side and this becomes the adjacent side so sin C will be opposite by hypotenuse it will be AB by AC so that is 24 by 25 24 by 25 cos C is adjacent by hypotenuse adjacent is BC hypotenuse is AC so that is 7 by 25 so these are the answers these are the answers for that question